Hi, I am Trisha Hugelay, and I am the Chair of Pediatric and Adolescent Gynecology here at Children's Hospital Colorado. And I would like to talk to you today about a research study that our team is doing looking to optimize menstrual bleeding in adolescents and young adults who use the levonorgestrel IUD. The levonorgestrel IUD is increasingly being used by our teens and young adults for both contraception, routine, sometimes patients need more complex contraception, as well as menstrual management. And we know that satisfaction rates are generally very high, upwards of 80 to 85 percent. Given how safe and effective the IUD is, it's endorsed by multiple organizations, including the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention as very safe and effective for use in adolescents and young adults. But despite these endorsements, the use of the IUD remains low and discontinuation rights, unfortunately, are still as high as 50% in adolescents and young adults. And those who discontinue the levonorgestrel IUD tell us that unfavorable bleeding profile is the most common reason for discontinuation. In fact, 25 to 62 percent of all users will experience irregular breakthrough bleeding in the first three to six months after the device is placed. So although unscheduled bleeding with a levonorgestrel IUD is common, unfortunately very little research has been done to understand the mechanism behind the unscheduled bleeding or how to effectively prevent it. There have been some studies looking at treatment afterwards with only limited success, but very little research into how to prevent the unscheduled bleeding from occurring. And one proposed mechanism for that early unscheduled bleeding following the IUD placement is the, basically the rapid endometrial shedding and thinning that happens in response to the hormone, particularly among patients who have a relatively thickened endometrial lining when the IUD is placed. And as we know, adolescents in particular frequently develop a very thickened endometrial lining because of anovulatory cycles that are so common and often normal, and they occur in upwards of 50 to 80 percent of teens in the first several years after their first period. So we designed this study with two hypotheses. First, we hypothesized that adolescents with that thicker endometrial lining will likely experience a greater number of days of unscheduled bleeding after their IUD is inserted. And we further hypothesized that adolescents who are treated potentially with 10 days of progesterone to induce a withdrawal bleed prior to the IUD insertion would then experience fewer days of unscheduled bleeding in the weeks following that placement. So our study design is basically a randomized controlled trial of adolescents and young adults presenting to our gynecology clinic with those anovulatory irregular cycles. And basically the first cohort would be treated with the progesterone for 10 days first to again to induce that withdrawal period and then undergo IUD placement. And the second cohort would have the IUD placed alone without that initial withdrawal bleed. And our primary outcome that we're wanting to look at are what are the number of self-reported bleeding days at four weeks after placement in these patients. And secondarily, we hope to look at, well, not only how much are they bleeding or how many days, but how, what is the quantity of that bleeding? You know, how bothersome is it? What is their perception of whether it's bothersome? And overall, most importantly, what are their satisfaction rates at about six months? And do they want to continue it? And does that differ um, among the two groups? It's important always to know about complications. So what is the IUD expulsion rate? And then also, we want to look at that endometrial lining and basically see does the, the size of the lining before the IUD placement predict the amount of bleeding they may have afterwards. Here at Children's Colorado in the Division of Pediatric and Adolescent Gynecology, it is our vision to elevate reproductive health across the lifespan. And this is just one example of a study that we are doing to really try and improve the care for our teens, improve their satisfaction so that they can really focus on their overall health and well-being. For more information about this study and the clinical care that we provide to our patients here at Children's, you can reach us online and also through our main clinical phone number.